Good morning, family and friends. Welcome to the November 29th worship service at St. Paul United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Deborah, and I warmly welcome each and every one of you. I have a couple of announcements that I want to share with you. Uh, number one, our cat and mitt cap and mitten tree is still there and it is collecting hats and mittens and if you have more that you would like to add to our collection so that we can donate it to children in need please please bring them by just call us first so that we can make sure that we're here to uh, to accept your donations and we are also selling pecans pecans make a great christmas gift especially the chocolate covered ones so uh, again call the church first you can drop by and pick up a couple of bags of pecans thirdly and i think Probably most importantly is this. I miss your face. I miss your faces, all of you. I want to see you in a Bible study, okay? Now, I put some information out there on Facebook for a Bible study that's called Companies Coming, which goes right along with the sermon series that we're going to be uh, hearing over the next several weeks. So, all you have to do is either message me or indicate, maybe email me, and, and I will send you the link for the Bible study. It'll be a six week study that starts on December 1st at 6.30. We'll be using the Zoom app for that. That means we can look each other in the eye. I can get to see the faces that I miss so much. No books to buy, no videos to watch. It'll just be us and our Bibles and talking about God's word. What could be better than that? I invite you one and all to please, please join us. I look forward to seeing you there. Now let's enjoy our prelude by Mr. Rayford Raby. Dear Heavenly Father, as we begin this Advent season, we come to you today just to worship you and to thank you for all that you've done. I know in this time of ups and downs and of hustle and bustles, we try to figure out the new way to, to get everything ready for the holidays. I pray that, that you just keep us centered on you and keep us centered on what's the real reason we celebrate Christmas, the real reason we celebrate this Advent time. It's that it's the birth and love of Jesus Christ, the Lord. We ask that as we gather together on our couch or, or in our living rooms, in our kitchen, dining rooms, or just behind our tablets, Lord, I pray that you keep us centered on you. I ask all of this in your wonderful name. Amen. If ever there was a year we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the year we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right. Nothing seems like it used to be. Nothing. We need Advent. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us, even in the mess of our world. Hope that you still see us, though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this light be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Here we have our time for the hymn. And this hymn for today is, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And that comes from Romans eight twenty four through 25. God gives us so many things, and in return he asks that we believe. He asks that we have hope and faith in him. We have not seen God, and we have not seen Jesus. Yet we are asked to believe in what we haven't seen. Even more, we are asked to wait in patience. All this is the very nature of hope and belief. Perhaps that's why we celebrate Advent and Christmas each year. The season is a season of waiting and a time of hoping, followed by the fulfillment of our hope, the birth of Jesus. Jesus does not live among us physically as he did 2,000 years ago, but celebrating each Christmas makes his presence here a little more real and helps us wait for him with a little more hope. Something that you can do right now during the season of Advent, a fun activity for you guys, is that you can get a blank calendar and you can make it a hope calendar. Right now, with everything that's going on, many relatives or close friends may not be able to see you at this time, and maybe not even for Christmas, but they hope that they can see you soon. So this would be a great gift for anybody um, that you're missing right now. Go through a blank calendar and mark down in color all of the important family dates for the new year. Birthdays, expected births, wedding dates, anniversaries, graduations. Put family photos in any spaces that you can. And then give that to one of your relatives or friends that you're missing as a present so that they can find a hint of hope for when they get to see you soon. Just remember to keep believing, to believe in what we cannot see, and whenever you are feeling alone or afraid, just pray to God, Lord, I believe in you. Help my unbelief. Amen.
On this first Sunday in Advent, our reading in scriptures will be from Mark, the 13th chapter, verses 24 to 37. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Thank you, Lois, for reading our scripture today. The new sermon series, Company is Coming, and today's sermon, This Place is a Mass. Before we begin, though, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that you have given me to bring the message to your people. Lord, I, I thank you for that. Lord, I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be pleasing in your sight, for you alone are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Sermon series, Company is Coming. Sermon, This Place is a Mess. Now, of course, I'm not talking about our sanctuary here. It looks quite beautiful, all dressed up for Advent. But I have to tell you, I do not remember an Advent in which the statement, this place is a mess, is more true and in so many ways. Our nation is divided regarding race. The, the mask or not mask debate goes on. The recent presidential election, the economic woes brought about by the pandemic, how to safely educate our children, and the safety versus social needs debate. All of that rages on. All of these issues and more weigh down on us. And let's be honest, they're making us a little crazy. Now, perhaps it offers just, just a bit of comfort to know that the world in which the first advent unfolded was a mess too. It was a mess. The area where Jesus was born, right? The, the, the Romans were an occupying force. The brutal Roman government had absolute rule over the people of the region. The vast majority of the people lived in grinding poverty, working rented land, starving in the off season, and paying taxes in excess of their 50% of their normal income. Infant mortality was at an astonishing 25%. The idea of, of human rights or, or even the inherent dignity in a human being was a subversive idea. It's brought about, of course, by Jesus Christ, but for everybody else, it wasn't even on their radar. Their world was a mess too. Now, of course, Advent is about waiting, right? 
but it's not like waiting in the line at Walmart, right? Which seems to go on forever. It's not like waiting for a bus. If you've ever waited for a bus, you know how boring that can be. The waiting to celebrate the birth of Christ is, is not just for shopping or baking or, or so that we can, but it is rather that we can have time to prepare our hearts. Now, the phrase prepare our hearts is very churchy, all right? So, so I'd like to delve into that a little bit. Let's talk about that just a little bit. The human condition is this, that we are all, all tending towards sin. Even the saintly of us, saintliest of us, fails every single day. And God knows this, and this doesn't surprise him. He knows all about us, and he has an answer in the person of Jesus Christ. Because our hearts are so desperately wicked, as Jeremiah tells us in the book of his name, uh, chapters, uh, chapter 9, verse 17, we cannot help ourselves. We can't do it. And even though we have a Savior who stands ready to forgive us every time we mess up, we still mess up. Taking time to prepare our hearts for Christmas requires us to spend intentional time in prayer and meditation and reading the Bible. And that's why I'm suggesting so strongly that we come together in that Bible study. This is the way we can learn how far we have wandered from God. Advent is a time when we take a closer look at God and we get ourselves closer to God to look into our hearts and to prepare ourselves for this miraculous gift that God is sending our way. Now, Advent is a time to prepare to receive the best gift that God has bestowed on us. In the United States, when somebody hands you a gift, you probably receive it from them, and you probably give them a verbal thank you, and, and you may write a, a note of appreciation as well, right? In other countries, though, the way a person receives a gift is of utmost importance. For example, if an Asian person hands you a gift, you receive it, if you receive it with one hand, that is an insult to the person and to the gift. In that culture, to accept a gift with just one hand is to question the worth of the gift, to find fault with it. It is terribly, terribly weird, weird <laughs> terribly rude. There we go. The proper way to accept a gift is with both hands. That means that you value it, you appreciate it, you bring it in wholeheartedly. And so that's the gift that God sends to us is Jesus Christ. And of course, I'm not talking about physical gifts here that come in brightly uh, wrapped packages or, or paper bags. I'm referring to the gift of Jesus. So how do you accept the gift of Jesus? When I was a kid, I loved playing with arts and crafts. My parents were always great about seeing that I was well supplied with construction paper and glue and paints and scissors. I, I had it all. They were really, really good to me about that. Shortly uh, after a burst of creativity in which I had used it all and it was all over my bedroom floor. I had scraps of paper, I had uh, the paints, I had scissors, glue, it was just a mess. It was all over the place. And then my mother told me that, hey, we're expecting company, you gotta clean this mess up. Well, I was an obedient child, sometimes, but I was definitely a lazy child. And if there was one way to do it, I was gonna try to take the shortcut here. So plan A was to follow my mother's idea and to throw away my scrap paper and put away my paints and put away my scissors. That was plan A. Plan B, now that was really interesting because at that point I noticed that my bedroom floor was hard wood, kind of a slippery surface, right? So plan A really paled in interest and the idea of plan B sprouted in my mind. So I took all my stuff that was all over the floor and I shoved it under my bed. My room looked terrific. So after like two minutes, I told my mother proudly that, that hey, look at my room, look at my room. Well, I was the fourth of five children. 
but my mother wasn't at all fooled. She looked into my bedroom. She knew exactly what I had done. There's no way I could have cleaned it up that quickly. She sighed heavily and she shut the door to my bedroom. And that was that. So plan A was to pick up the mess. Plan B was to just hide it under the bed, right? As I recall, she just looked into my room, sighed heavily and shut the door. But here's the thing, here's the point. We cannot just shove our sins under the bed. We cannot just shut the door on our spiritual room. Advent requires that we, with the help of Jesus, clean our spiritual room. Now, we don't have to do this to make ourselves more worthy because we're already as worthy as we're ever going to get. God already loves us as much as he ever will. But, but the idea of cleaning up our spiritual room does him honor. It recognizes the difference between the God in heaven and us, who we are, just the, these, these, these human beings who are in so much need of grace. We know that Christmas always arrives on the same day every year. It makes it easy for us to get ready, right? This year, we most likely will have more time on our hands. We may not be traveling. We may not be having the big family gatherings. We may not be Christmas shopping as much. So we're more likely to have some time on our hands to spend in quiet prayer, in Bible reading, right? So here we go. Here's a great time to join in on that Bible study. Let's, let's, let's use scripture to, to remind us of who we are in relation to God. Let's use scripture to, to, to worship him and to recognize him as the great God that he is. Happy first Sunday of Advent. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you have given us precious time we ask now that you, would, uh, that you would give us the wisdom to intentionally seek you out, to get closer to you, Lord, to clean up our spiritual room and not just shove things under the bed, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I take a moment now to invite you to give back to your church. The church that is feeding you spiritually, the church that is doing works in the community. Let's take just a moment now to, uh, to give a prayer over the gifts that are coming our way. And of course, your gifts, your offerings, and your tithes, they can come to us in many ways. You can drop them by the church, you can put them in the mail, or you can, uh, you can give them over the internet. And so you can work that out with your financial institution. Let's pray in faith for the gifts that are coming our way. Great God of wonderful surprises, we enter this season of preparation for your son's coming. Not looking just for those fun times in the past, but we are anticipating a return. Help us to give our, of ourselves generously, for we do not know the day or the hour. We pray this in the name of the one who gave it all. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, everyone. Uh, for this first week of Advent, uh, I wanted to do a, a, a simple song that uh, my, uh, my grandma, Evelyn Bunt, used to do with us in the Angel Choir. Um, it's a peaceful song, and uh, I hope it brings you some joy.
As we take a few moments now to lift our prayers up to our Lord, I will offer the pastoral prayer. Gracious Lord, we come before you, a people who are frightened, confused, frustrated, sorrowful. Lord God, this is such a difficult time for so many people. We lift up our nation that is divided. We lift up uh, all of the issues that are going on right now with uh, not knowing how most safely to educate our children, uh, for the racial issues that divide, for the financial woes brought about by this, this virus, Lord. We pray that you would be with us, Lord. Increase our faith, even in difficult times. We saw that happen time and time again in the Old Testament. Things went wrong and people grew stronger. Things went wrong and people's faith was deepened, Lord. Help us to be those people. Lord, I lift up families who are struggling with, uh, with uh, uh, you know, issues of, of no income or less income. And, and relationships are strained because of so much togetherness, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Help us be the people that, that will make this world a better place. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. for our closing prayers, we prepare to go about the rest of our day, whatever that might entail. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. 
Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people because all people are God's people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you as you go forth. Have a blessed day.